This video is for educational purposes only. I am not a doctor, so go talk to a doctor. With that being said, let's get started. Hey guys, I got a really good comment recently on one of my recent videos from a user by the name of Kingdom King W eight H, and they say, "Quote, bro, I'm going to be locked down for fifty days, and I won't have access to my medications. I'm a diffuse thinner." I started taking Dutastride eight months ago and got very good results from it, but I don't want to lose my gains, unquote. Now, this comment is going to be helpful for us because we're actually going to be able to understand just how good Dutastride is once you reach a steady state concentration. So you can see over here that I already commented and I'll pretty much just highlight the important aspects about this. So this comment references mostly from the Olson et al. 2006 study titled, quote, the importance of dual 5-alpha reductase inhibition in the treatment of male pattern hair loss results of a randomized placebo controlled study of dutastride versus finasteride, unquote, by Ellis A. Olson et al. And we can see how long it takes for serum DHT along with tissue DHT to go back to normal after the discontinuation of dutasteride. And from this study, we're able to understand how long it takes for DHT to go back to normal levels after the discontinuation of dutasteride at either a 0.5 milligram dose or a 2.5 milligram dose. So one of the major takeaways in this study is that dutasteride suppresses DHT for a long time after stopping. Well, at least if you're taking it at 0.5 milligram or 2.5 milligram daily. So let's go to that relevant part in this particular paper. So when we go to that part of the paper, the paper says, quote, 12 weeks after termination of treatment, being 36 weeks overall in this particular study, so 12 weeks after they stopped the study, the mean serum DHT was not significantly different from baseline value in the placebo dutastride 0.05 milligram and 0.1 milligram group and the finasteride 5.0 milligram group, unquote. That means if you're taking dutasteride at 0.05 milligram and 0.1 milligram or finasteride at five milligram and even one milligram by the way because they they don't mention it in this study but one milligram finasteride has the same suppression of dht as five milligram but after 12 weeks of discontinuing it you're going to go back to baseline you're going to get your normal dht levels that you started out with when you began the treatment or before you even took the treatment rather and just for some additional context we're going to be quickly looking at this old study from 1990 titled, quote, Effects of Finasteride MK906, a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor on circulating androgens in male volunteers, unquote, by Glenn J. Gromley et al. And in this particular study, we're seeing two parts, right? In the first part, they tested finasteride at, a at very, very high doses. I'm talking about, as you can see here on the screen, 25 milligram, 50 milligram, and 100 milligram for 11 days. And in the second part of the study, they tested at lower doses, 0 0.04 milligram, 0 0.12 milligram, 0 0.2 milligram, and 1 milligram. And what we found out is that the results from part two showed a significant reduction in DHT. However, DHT returned to pretreatment values after discontinuing the drug for 14 days. So after discontinuing finasteride for 14 days, people's DHT levels went back to normal, these men in this study, that is. There are other key aspects of this paper too, because it notes here in the discussion that, quote, part one was therefore designed to evaluate this dosing range. After 11 days of treatment, the lowest dose, this is for, again, the part one, 12.5 milligram twice daily, was observed to be equally as effective as higher doses. Unquote. So this is when it involves the suppression of DHT. However, when we go to the conclusion real quick, we find out that, quote, maximum suppression of DHT occurs after a single dose of one milligram per day, unquote. So what we can conclude from all this information is, newsflash, if you're off of an asteroid for just 14 days, it's very likely that your DHT is going to go back up to normal. 
And this assumes you've reached the steady state concentration, which is probably achieved in the first week of daily use. And we also have to take into account that finasteride has a very short half-life compared to something like dutasteride. Finasteride's half-life, if I recall correctly, is like six hours and dutasteride is like five weeks. So huge difference. And that's why you can probably get away with not using dutasteride after you've reached that steady state concentration, especially if you've been using it for longer than six months. You can probably get away with not using dutasteride for a month. Now, there is some discussion what happens to the tissue, right? And I don't think the tissue should be lagging that far behind, at least when it comes to finasteride use. So if you discontinue finasteride for 14 days, okay, your serum DHT is going to go back up, but you should also expect that to be reflected in your tissue DHT in your scalp. At least that's my determination. I'm not going to go too crazy in the literature right now in this video, but this is just some things to keep in mind. But let's go right back to that Olsen et al. study that we were talking about before, because I just segued. So let's hop right back into it. But let's read further. Quote, however, at 36 weeks, serum DHT had not yet returned to baseline for patients receiving dutasteride at 0.5 milligram and 2.5 milligram. Unquote. So, what are the authors saying? After 12 weeks of discontinuation, the people that took 0.5 mg dutasteride daily or 2.5 mg dutasteride daily, they didn't go back to their baseline DHT values. In fact, we will find out it will take them a while to go back to their pre-treatment DHT levels. So, if you're somebody who's going on vacation, so long as you've, you know, for following the confines of this study, so long as you've been on dutasteride for longer than six months, like our particular user over here, Kingdom King over here, so long as you've been on it for over six months, he says he's been on it for eight months, you should be fine, right? If you're away for a month, if you can't use it for a month, your serum DHT isn't going to go back to normal magically. It's still going to take quite some time because the dutasteride has a long half-life and it's still in your system. It's still suppressing your DHT, especially in your tissues. And yes, the tissue would include the scalp DHT as well. And just another point to add, your serum DHT levels are based primarily on your tissue DHT levels, right? So what do I mean by this? Serum DHT is derived from tissue DHT that leaks into your serum. So DHT is a paracrine hormone. That means free testosterone that's floating around in your body, right? And it comes in contact with some kind of tissue in your body that has 5-alpha reductase enzymes. And it transforms that free testosterone into DHT. And some of that DHT leaks from the tissue and goes into your bloodstream. So when the serum DHT goes down, right, it's a reflection of what's happening in the tissue. However, we're not going to get a complete reality of what's happening in the tissue. We are more so saying there's less leaking into the serum because there's less being produced in the tissue, if that makes kind of sense when we talk about serum DHT levels. But to a point, the two can kind of separate, right? Serum DHT isn't a perfect reflection of what's going on in the tissue, but it gives us a rough idea. But all in all, the takeaway message should be that if you're on dutasteride 0.5 milligram daily or 2.5 milligram daily for over six months, you should be fine. It should take a while for you to go back to your normal DHT levels. And just for reference, the time to return to 25% of your baseline DHT values, not your full DHT values, but only 25% of your baseline DHT values. Over here, we're going to read this quote from the study. The study says, quote, serum DHT returned to within 25% of baseline in a median of 86 days after treatment with a range of 71 to 307 days for the dutasteride 0.5 milligram group and in a median of 155 days with a range of 72 to 421 days for the dutasteride 2.5 milligram group, unquote. 
So that means it takes a median of 86 days after you've discontinued dutasteride at 0.5 milligram to go back within 25% of your DHT values. So let's simplify this a bit further. It's saying that it takes that long for your DHT to rise back to at least 75% of what you had before treatment. So hopefully that makes sense. And interestingly enough, somebody in this data set, it took them 307 days. So imagine that, that's kind of crazy. And, and on the low end, it took somebody 71 days, right? And for the 2.5 milligram group, to get back within 25% of their baseline DHT values, right? So again, that means to get 75% of what they had before, 75% of the DHT values they had before treatment, it took only a median of 155 days. However, for somebody in the data set, it took them 421 days. That's probably rare, right? It could be one person. But at the low end, you can see that it took 72 days. That's the lowest, right? So you can expect to have a range between 71 days upwards to 421 days if you're using 0.5 milligram dutasteride daily or 2.5 milligram dutasteride daily to see if your DHT baseline gets within 25% range, right? So being only 50 days off of dutasteride still places you well within the suppression window. And finally, what we have to understand is that dutasteride's effects in this regard are dose dependent. And we can look at the quote over here that kind of says this. It says over here, right? Quote, serum DHT concentrations in all dutasteride groups were suppressed significantly compared with placebo in a dose related manner. Unquote. Let's go on. Let's read some more, right? It says the same thing over here in the study. Quote, scalp DHT concentrations in the dutasteride groups were also significantly suppressed compared with placebo in a dose-related manner. As with serum DHT, the 0.1 milligram dutasteride and finasteride groups showed a comparable degree of scalp DHT suppression at 32% and 41% respectively. Scalp DHT decreased by 51% with 0.5 milligram dutasteride and by 79% with 2.5 milligram dutasteride. Unquote. So all in all, guys, if you're not able to use dutasteride for whatever reason, and you've been on dutasteride for over six months, right? So long as you were using it at 0.5 milligram somewhat daily or 2.5 milligram somewhat daily, you should have over 50 days off of being relatively safe and still being within that sort of suppression window of serum and presumably tissue DHT or scalp DHT suppression. So don't worry about it, guys. Don't complain too much. You should be fine. And that's kind of the video that I wanted to make. Hopefully it was clear and understandable. And yeah, just don't make it a habit. Don't be off of it, obviously, for for too long. Still, you know, it's ideal to use it daily. But if you ever had to get off of it for some time, you should still be fine. Theoretically, you shouldn't lose that much ground. Just get back on it as soon as you can. Peace out, guys.